Hi all, so in this video, want to motivate the types of differential equations that we'll be working with and some basic examples to get an intuition about why we get solutions um, such as the ones that we'll see for second order linear differential equations. So here would be what a generic second order linear differential equation would look like. So now we have a second derivative. Um, and we'll first be pairing this back a little bit so that each of the things multiplying the derivatives of y are constant. So we're just going to have constant times the second derivative plus another constant times the first derivative plus another constant times the zeroth derivative, which is the function itself, is equal to some expression of the independent variable. And at first, we'll even simplify this a bit more to take a look at differential equations where the right side is equal to zero. And so we call this homogeneous case. So we'll first be working with differential equations that are of the form a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y are equal to zero. And then we'll talk about what happens when we don't get a zero. And then we'll talk about what happens when a, b, and c may depend on t as well. Uh, so first, just to kind of illustrate the types of problems where this comes from, um, a very classic example of a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients would be um, what we'll call a mass spring system. So we have a mass which is attached to a spring which is attached to a wall and we might want to come up with a model for how is this mass moving as time goes on. And that is exactly going to be a second order differential equation with constant coefficients. Um, some other examples uh, will be if you've ever seen videos of singers who can hit the right note and shatter a wine glass, for example, like Ella Fitzgerald. Um, that would be another example of systems such as these um, are at play. And if you're curious about reading how Ella Fitzgerald did it here, you can go to this is a link over here. Um, and another really interesting sort of problem is a very um, well-known catastrophe, which was a bridge in Washington State, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, um, had a collapse. So this is what happened to the bridge after it got hit with wind at a certain frequency, um, which was in resonance with the construction of the bridge. So we can see um, why these things might happen in some very special circumstances. So before we look at those cases, let's just consider a simplified version of this. So if we want to try and think about a solution to a second order differential equation, such as this one, which is the second derivative of x is equal to x. Um, sometimes just reading the differential equation actually helps you arrive at the solution without doing any integration or any other methods. So what this differential is, equation is saying is, well, the solution x of t is a function for which its second derivative gives us exactly back the function itself. And so then you can start to think about what are some functions x of t that might satisfy this. Well, we couldn't use something like this because, um, right, when we take the derivative of this, we don't get back the original function. So we can't get a power function out of this as a solution to this differential equation. We could think about, hmm, well, what is a function when I take its first derivative and then I take its derivative again, I get back the same exact function that I started with. Um, that sounds like the function e to the t, right? When we take the first derivative of this, we get back the function itself. And then when we take the derivative of that again with respect to t, we would get back e of t. So this one checks out. Um, what is a function whose second derivative 
is itself e of t is one such function. Every time I take the derivative of e of t, I just get back the same function. So now we've just solved our first second order differential equation just by reading the equation and then thinking about what a solution to that equation might be. And this fits into the types of differential equations that we're going to be studying because this equation up top is totally equivalent to this equation down here. Um, this would be a second order differential equation with constant coefficients and it's homogeneous since on the right side we have zero. So let's take a look at some other types of second order differential equations. Okay, here is a very similar looking differential equation, which is x double prime plus x is equal to zero. So one way that we could read this is, well, the second derivative of x plus itself is equal to zero, and it might be useful to just rearrange some terms and recognize that this equation is equivalent to saying x double prime is equal to minus x. And so now, what is this differential equation saying? We want to find the function f whose second derivative gives me minus 1 times itself. So again, power functions are not going to make sense as guesses here um, because when we take derivative of power functions, we don't get back multiples of that function. The power drops and we get totally different looking things. So um, power functions aren't going to work. Exponential function e to the t won't work since it doesn't change signs. When we take the derivative. So what is a function when I take the derivative one time I get something and then I take the derivative a second time and I just get back minus one times the function we started with and if you think about functions that have that sort of behavior well let's think about for example the trig function so like cosine of t when I take the first derivative right we get minus sine of t when we take the second derivative we get minus the cosine of t, which is exactly minus 1 times the function that we started with. So cosine of t works. And you might be thinking, are there other such functions that could work? Um, and there are. If we took the sine, we would get very similar behavior in the derivative. So the derivative of sine is cosine. We don't get the sine change yet. But then when I take the derivative of the cosine, we get back minus sine of t, which is minus 1 times the function itself that we started with. So for this second order differential equation, we got trig functions. And the big difference that we can observe is in the previous one, we had this, and something like this had exponential solutions, something like this when we get the sign change with the second derivative, that brings up notions of trig functions as being reasonable guesses for solutions. So now let's consider a second order differential equation with constant coefficients and it's homogeneous, right? So just remember we have constants in front of each term that has an X or a derivative of X and it's homogeneous because we have a zero on the right side. So let's think about what solutions for this differential equation, what properties they might have. Well, here we're looking for function x whose second derivative is equal to minus 4x. So a nice way to phrase that would be um, we're looking for a function x for whose second derivative is equal to minus 4 times itself. And so since we're getting negative a uh, multiple of x when we do the second derivative you might be thinking um, trig functions such as sine of t and cosine of t these seem like reasonable starting points for our guess but we already saw on the previous one that if i pick sine of t or cosine of t 
I'm not going to get this minus four in here. So how do we get multiples that come out from taking derivative of trig functions? For example, if I had some number inside of the trig function, so if I'm multiplying t by some constant b, then notice the derivative of this, the b comes out front because we need to do the chain rule. So the b comes out front, the derivative of the inside function is b, and the derivative of the outside function is cosine. So we would get b times the cosine of bt. And then when we take the derivative again, we get another b that comes out because we need to do the chain rule again. And then the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So we get minus b squared sine b of t. Notice what we started with was the sine of b of t. So what we actually wind up getting is minus b squared times the function that we started with, which was x. So what we have here is the second derivative of this function gives me minus b squared times x. So that's exactly what we want. And indeed, we actually want minus b squared should equal minus 4, which tells us the value that b here has to equal 2. So one solution is x equals the sine of 2t. And hopefully you can see that a very similar argument would lead to a second solution, which is x is equal to the cosine of 2t. And I should just mention here that actually there are two values of b that would work. Actually, if b were equal to minus 2, that would also work. So we have a couple of other solutions, such as the sine of minus 2t and x is equal to the cosine of minus 2t. Um, and in fact, this and this are exactly the same function because the cosine is an even function. But um, there are other solutions. So what you can see here is that the solutions are not unique. And hopefully that makes sense because we don't have any initial conditions here. So we just have a differential equation which has more than one solution until we add some initial condition. And just to kind of see what would happen, maybe you think something similar might work with an exponential function. So maybe I try e to the 2t. If I take the derivative of this, we get 2e to the 2t. And if we take the derivative again, we get 4e to the 2t, which is equal to 4 times the function that we started with. So trying the exponential, we can get the 4 to match up, but we don't get a change in the sign. So to summarize that key fact, um, when we have a negative sign, a negative constant multiplied by x is equal to its second derivative, when we get this sign change with the second derivative, that means trig functions are going to work. The exponential function is not going to work because we're not going to get this sign change with the exponential. Okay, and so let's try one last example. Let's consider the differential equation x double prime minus 25x is equal to zero. Again, second order differential equation, constant coefficients, which is homogeneous. And um, in order to think about what this solution might look like, this is equivalent to the equation, the second derivative of x is equal to 25 times x. So in other words, taking the second derivative is equivalent to multiplying that function by 25. So another way that we can state this is x of t is a function whose second derivative is 25 times itself. And uh, you may have just thought about what this solution might be based on our previous example, um, which was we are now getting the derivative is a positive multiple of what we started with. And so the trig functions won't work because if I were to try something such as x is the cosine of 5t, 
when we take the second derivative of this, we just showed that we're going to get a sign change. We'll get 25 times the cosine of 5t back, but we get this sign change with the trig functions. So the trig functions aren't going to work. Okay, since these, again, are going to lead to a sign change when we take the second derivative. So when we have no sign change, that's when an exponential might be a good guess. And so trying something out such as, well, maybe let's try, we know that if we had e to the t, we don't get that 25 back, right? If we just have this, then x double prime is equal to e to the t, which is x. So that is not going to work, but we can think about maybe if we put some power inside of here, if we choose the right value of r, then that might work. So if we take the derivative of e to the rt, the r comes down, we take the derivative again from the chain rule, another power of r comes down, and we can see that this is equal to r squared times e to the rt, which was just the function x that we started with. So we can see here that the second derivative of this exponential function does indeed give me some constant multiple times x. And in this case, we can see that this value for r actually could be 5 or we can have a value of minus five would also work here. So um, this would tell me that we have a solution. E, X is equal to E to the five T would work. And we have a solution X is equal to E to the minus five T would work for this case. So we have two possible solutions um, here that you could check work out when you plug them back in. So the reading quiz is going to have some differential equations similar to this one where I'm going to ask you to kind of guess and explain why they might be reasonable guesses. And then in class, we'll take a look at some more general examples of differential equations of this variety.